science comes from how you solve the problem. So there is the what of the question and there is the how of the question. What needs to be done is defined by the India-centric problem, but the solutions are rooted in very deep interdisciplinary science. Those are the companies that we actually incubate here. The offering of the company should be around science and technology. So STEM is nothing but the incubation arm of uh, Indian Institute of Science. At STEM, we know that we are trying to build commercial enterprises. Most of the startups that we incubate the market is right here. So we are going to have startups which solve the problems that India has. Of course, it's also applicable to other developing countries as well as developed countries. What happens when a founder comes with an idea is that we don't say yes immediately, but we also don't say no immediately. So they have a series of conversations. So the first criteria we look at is, you know, how good is the entrepreneurial team? And then we look at business plan, competition and everything else that uh, goes with it. So this process typically takes some time, you know, I mean, uh, it has taken as long as six to eight months in some companies and maybe two to three months with some other company. And then we put together this committee, uh, you know, to evaluate the proposal because we bring in domain experts. Plus, we have increasingly started to get some people from the VC community to sit on these uh, meetings. So when we evaluate a company or evaluate an idea from an entrepreneur, we make sure that it is still not in the research stage, that it is moved beyond research. But at the same time, it, uh, you know, the startups don't necessarily have, already have to have a proof of concept or a prototype. In other words, it can be an idea stage or it can be a little beyond the idea stage. Sometimes what happens is we find that the idea is still interesting, but it is probably a bit early to incubate them. Maybe there's still some work to be done. Uh, so we kind of, you know, we take them into this EIR program and uh, work alongside with them for about six months to about a year, where they can actually hone their idea, come up with a business plan, and then be ready for incubation. Because these are science and technology based companies, their gestation period is longer. It's only after three to four years that uh, you, know, you feel comfortable or you feel confident that, yeah, this company is going to. One of the things what we look for when you are applying uh, for incubation out here is whether you have it in you. Uh, are they really entrepreneurs? Meaning, do they understand that it is a long haul, that uh, they want to get salary? I mean, they've got to figure out how they're going to support themselves and the family. And it takes a lot of time before they can be successful. They must learn. They must gen genuinely be capable of learning things that they have never even thought of in the past, whether it is in finance or marketing or sales any of these areas, they must be willing learners. As they, and above everything else, a lot of integrity. They must have a lot of integrity. Integrity not just in terms of you know, money and fiduciary matters, but integrity of purpose. Uh, integrity um, in, in terms of recognizing at, 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 at any given stage that this is likely to work and this is not likely to work. To be able to give up your own pet ideas when somebody else comes up with a better idea and say that that's the right thing to do. So it's a broad term, but I, I think very little in life, not only in this, but in anything, is accomplished without integrity. And I, I, I think that's very important. Just because we say no, it doesn't mean the idea is bad or the, uh, that it has no future. We are not your know, traditional uh, VC because our evaluations are not based on immediate returns or any stated return. It is just that we think this is a company that can do well, both in terms of the impact on the society around us and in terms of the value they can generate or wealth they can generate. We have to hope that some of these companies will fetch us some returns, but we would rather that they make an impact on society first and then the thing happens. So. I've got this idea. I want to really do this. But how will I do this? Where is the space? Where are the people? Where is the money? Where are the machinery? Where are the expertise? Um, we provide all that, or we at least facilitate in providing all the resources. We try to help them get money, and the sources are really two or three. One is there are some government grants. Second is we also introduce them to individual investors. And we are also in touch with, there are not too many VCs who come in at the seed stage itself. Typically they like to come in only when you have your first customer, etc. But that is much, much later. However, there is only a handful of VCs, maybe two or three or four who are willing to take a look at the company and come in much earlier. That means at the seed stage itself. And they also realize that since startups are really commercial ventures, they need to have mentorship, you know, 
with people experience in industry. Technical mentorship takes you so far. The business mentorship helps you move from that place to the to the next. To ensure that there is seriousness on both sides, we have created a mentorship model where SID actually pays the mentor a monthly retainer for the first six months. There is a lot of equipment in IASC which the startup will need. For example, the Nano Center has equipment which is very, very useful for some of these companies. There may be a need for them to license the IP that IAC already has, in which case there is also a royalty component. Currently we have about 22 startups. They are across different uh, domains, from aerospace to space technology to uh, water purification to biosciences. There is there's a startup which is developing uh, vaccines for local influencers. There are a couple of biotech startups. So there are a wide variety of startups across different domains. We want them to be in a position where they can either stand in front of a customer and acquire that customer or they can stand in front of a VC and get the investment. Because this company has now reduced the science to a technology to a commercial reality. Somebody finding their first customer or somebody doing you know clinical trials somewhere Right? These are all milestones which are uh, essentially very important in the startup's journey. So every time they achieve that, we feel happy that they are on the right track. I mean, it's your idea, your, you know, your business and uh, really your baby. If you have been a parent and you've seen your child grow, it's much the same feeling watching your startup grow. <laughs> Even if a small percentage of these startups are successful, the kind of impact that it will create is huge, be it in healthcare or agriculture or otherwise. And that is what we find very exciting.